Please, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks. If you haven't checked out the Tiger Forex Report, outstanding time to do it with everything going on. You can head on over to the front page of TFNN under the newsletter tab. You'll see that newsletter, Tiger Forex Report. You can sign up, $97. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Nothing to lose. And then you jump over to the services tab. If you you know, you $97 for these webinars, folks. Outstanding webinars talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. Strategies with our man Teddy. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tom. So, do we have enough going on in this market this week and next, Teddy? Uh, we definitely have a lot of uh, news events, that's for sure, starting with tomorrow with the uh, unemployment claims, and then uh, Friday is the big day with the unemployment number and the PMI as well. Uh, and then, of course, next week, we got an election, we got a Federal Reserve meeting. Um, what do you think about, let's just kick it off with yields, driving the dollar, of course, and driving you know a lot of the action. We've mm -hmm. been talking about it. I know that we're, you know, on the same page to a certain degree in terms of men. The 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 market getting a little bit over over its skis with the amount of cuts it had priced in about six weeks ago. We're now sitting with a ten year at about four and a quarter percent. The dollar been so strong recently above one oh four. What do you think about the general moves with yield and the dollar as we come into, you know, the election and just another Federal Reserve meeting and just kind of the repricing of some of that debt? Sure, sure. Well, that's why I think tomorrow's uh, unemployment claims and Friday's unemployment number are going to be a big things for the Fed to be watching because, remember, they want higher unemployment. And if it starts ticking downward, which is the way it seems to be doing, it starts to put a little bit of a stranglehold on their cutting rates theory because, you know, that means either they started too early or they like you and I both kind of were on the same page that they probably should have done a quarter point the last meeting and do a quarter point this meeting you know the market already factored in every bit of a half a point cut you know so now the question is if these numbers keep tracking back to where they were and they're not getting better you know maybe what we did was just have a slight little pull back relief if you will remember inflation hasn't gone away it's just not as accelerating at the rate that it was it's still accelerating you know so and uh you have like you were talking about wages earlier and others there's other things that are inflationary so if that's the case you know that the whole cutting bias starts you start to question like even if they cut next week which they probably will will cut one more quarter point tomorrow or not i mean not tomorrow next week um i would be very shocked if they did a half a point i mean i was surprised last time about the half a point but i think with the way the numbers are tracking that it, it doesn't make sense because now it starts to go against their narrative if it's then it really is like what are you doing here because it, it really doesn't make they should have already been cutting either earlier you know or um their whole narrative is just they're just going against it for other reasons which they could be just to prop up the bond market i don't know you know so um but you can see by the spread between you know after all the fed cut a half a point last month and look at where rates are at, you know. I mean, we have yields that have been nothing but going up since they, they uh, cut the rate, you know. So even if we see a yeah. pullback, you know, a rally, you know, in the 10-year and the 30-year, which is very likely, you know. And I would say you're probably not going to see much of a move until sometime after tomorrow's number into Friday's numbers. And then I would say Monday, Tuesday, you know, it's going to be a very bit much of a flat line trade, you know, um, like you, you mentioned uh, the German numbers and what have you. Like, I think that the whole world is waiting on our election, you know, because <laughs> it, it's significant which which way this election swings, you know. So and especially yes. when you have the German economy that's collapsing. I mean, Volkswagen just announced they're closing three plants, um, which has never happened in their whole history. You know, not to mention they're cutting back workforce at other plants. You know, yeah. I mean, their business is imploding. You know, and they're one of the largest car manufacturers in the world. So their industrial complex is, uh, we've been talking about this for a while, is now showing some major signs of decay. You know, um, and if that keeps tracking that way, like you got to wonder why is it that the euro isn't stronger against the dollar? Well, it's because their economy is collapsing. Interest rates have nothing to do with it. You know, like there's a point where, you know, there's a carry trade that exists, you know, um, and, that, and that definitely is there. Um, but as far as the, the way yields are affected right now, there's so many other fundamental factors that it's showing you how much they're weighing on the on these economies and these currencies as well. You know, so I think it's going to be very interesting after next week. 
you know, we've we've had a trend now in the in the yields now for what is it since the middle of September. So we've had a nice trend. You know, obviously yeah. they've been going higher. You know, um, the currencies have kind of flattened out over the last week and a half. And I think once that they we get through next week, we're going to establish a new trend. You know, um, for at least a good month or so going into fourth quarter. You know, just because you know currencies typically trend, and I think that. No matter what your take is on what happens over the next week and a half, it should start to set certain fundamentals in place. You know, that we're, we're going to have clarity as far as what direction, what path is our government going? Is the Fed going to go? You know, um, at least for, it, it, I would say, at least the next, like, probably three to, to uh, nine months. You know, so this can be very interesting. I think that we're finally going to see, you know, we've had a big range trade in a lot of the major currencies, especially. Like, the only movers and shakers right now, you know, the only reason the dollar index is still floating under its highs right now is not because of the majors, because they're going pretty much flatline. You know, the pound, the euro, even the even the yen is only slightly buffering higher move highs, you know. But if you look at the Australian dollar, you know, that's collapsing. New Zealand dollar, that's collapsing. The U.S. dollar, Canada is totally rallying. You know, I mean, those things are, have all gone almost parabolic over the past two weeks, you know, yeah. relative to the, to the major currencies. So that's a big deal. It shows you that the majors are, are just basically, they're hanging in there, but the the influence now is coming from these other ones. And, that, and they, those countries have issues too. You know, everyone talks about how bad it is here. Guess what? Um, we have a global problem going on here. This is not just the United States, you know, so and everything is relative, you know, we're still the world's largest economy. So um, just as we start to fall back, you know, um, most of the Western countries, they're fa already falling and they're falling harder than we are. You know, I mean, Canada's yeah. debt level is skyrocketing beyond anything they can possibly imagine control. There's no way they can even remotely control it the way they're going right now. Their, 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 their dollar, the Canadian dollar could collapse, you know, sometime next year. Literally, if they do not change their policies, their, their debt, they just can't even possibly, I mean, no one's even going to buy it either. And that's the problem, you know. So when you start putting yeah. things like that in the perspective, that's what's holding the dollar up, you know. Do I, it's not like yes. the normal fundamental factors. So the central banks, you know, remember I said how, you know, a year and a half ago, we're going to have the currency wars because of the central banks when they were raising interest rates. This yep. time, it's not about the cutting. It's not going to be an aggressive cutting, you know what I mean? Because there's too many other factors that are going on that they're trying to juggle. And I think it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting to see how every, you know, admiral navigates their currency, if you will, globally. Oof. It's quite an economy across the globe, as you said, man. You laid out a bunch of great points. I appreciate it. And I was jumping through those charts when you were talking about them, man. And, and I don't keep track of some of those currencies and that's why i love talking about it because boy those are rip-roaring rallies when i was jumping through whether it was new zealand canada can you stay with us for one more segment teddy sure yeah no problem okay we'll jump around folks we'll talk a little bit of crude and uh we'll talk some other things we'll be back with teddy stay tuned we'll be right back Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't forget to check out his outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report, folks, or some of those outstanding webinars he's got under the services tab. As we're talking to you, Teddy, we got a little move in this dollar down to 104.14 in the grand scheme. You know, we just got some volatility. Um, but I want to get your take on crude because, boy, you talk about Sunday night. It was a little bit of risk off. Things like right. seems like things things could have been a little worse in terms of, you know, maybe they were going to hit Iran's energy, energy structure. What do you And they did not. What do you think of crude? It's $68 right now. Um, you know what? Right now it's below our downside breakout level, so I kind of have it looking to maybe dip down towards a $65 level. You know, I don't okay. think you're going to get much action below that. I think that's pretty much going to be the floor, at least until after the election. Um, and then I, I think you, what you have to do is really watch out for next week. So you got to remember that crude oil contract trades, they roll over every single month, okay? So for those of you that don't, are just that only watch the the market but don't know anything about crude oil futures um <clears throat> there when you take delivery on these you know for oil you know you're setting things out like into net you know not just november december january you're going all the way out into to a year from now you know so i think that you're going to see some major play in the spreads in the oil market next week okay um okay. depending on who wins this election and here's the reason why if if harris wins um, you're going to see oil back up at around $80 probably within a, a very short amount of time. If Trump wins, 
Um, you got to remember, he wouldn't take office until January. But you know that as far as people looking to take delivery, they're not going to be looking to take buy oil right now at sixty-five, seventy-five dollars a barrel when they know that within two months of him being in office, three months, oil will probably be trading around fifty dollars a barrel. You know, just because they're going to have, the, you know, and if if he does get elected, you know, all the companies are going to start gearing up for production. So they'll be ready to hit the ground running on, on Inauguration Day, you know. So <clears throat> so we'll look for that kind of a move next week. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. That crude store, pretty remarkable. We're going to be paying less for a gallon of crude than I have to pay for a gallon of water at Publix pretty yeah. soon. I can deal with that, man. Teddy, appreciate it so much, man. Have a great week. Look forward to talking to you sure. next Wednesday. Take care.